Hi students, in today's lecture, we will be discussing about a very captivating topic which is money laundering. We will also discuss the relationship between FEMA and money laundering legislation such as Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002 or commonly referred as PMLA. Before we study more about money laundering legislations, it is advisable to first acquaint ourselves with the term money laundering. Money laundering is the generic term used to describe the process by which criminal disguise the original ownership and control of the proceeds of criminal conduct by making such proceeds appear to have derived from legitimate sources. Just like you give your dirty clothes in a laundry and get them back nice and clean, criminals give their dirty money or money tainted with crimes to money launderers and get back the money which is clean, that is, which can be freely circulated in society and cannot be traced back to their crimes. Money laundering allows the criminal to transform illegally obtained funds into seemingly legitimate funds. It is in fact a worldwide problem now and almost all major economies are facing it. So how does money laundering work? The process of money laundering is quite extensive. Generally speaking, money is laundered whenever a person or business deals in any way with another person's benefit from crime. That can occur in countless number of diverse ways. You might remember that in 90s and early part of 21st century, there was a growing trend of Mumbai Mafia investing in Bollywood movies or award shows conducted in foreign countries. It was also a form of money laundering. Traditionally, money laundering has been described as a process which takes place in three distinct stages. First is placement. In this stage, criminally derived funds are introduced in the financial system. Second is layering, the substantive stage of process in which the property is washed and its ownership and source is disguised. The final stage is integration, in which the laundered property is reintroduced in the legitimate economy. This three-stage definition of money laundering is highly simplistic. The reality is that the so-called stages often overlap and in some cases, for example, in cases of financial crimes, there is no requirement for the proceeds of crime to be placed. The PMLA seeks to combat money laundering in India and has three main objectives. First, to prevent and control money laundering. Second, to confiscate and seize all the properties obtained from laundered money. Third, to deal with any other issues connected with money laundering in India. In simple words, the purpose of PMLA is to prevent any type of organized crime or mafia from investing their wealth into the economy and converting their tainted wealth into legitimate wealth. Now let's discuss some important aspects or features of PMLA. First feature of PMLA is Proceeds of Crime Any property becomes proceeds of crime under PMLA if the crime alleged is a crime specified in the schedule to PMLA. If an offence is a crime under a particular law which is not listed in the schedule, then the gains of that offence are not proceeds of crime. They are not dirty money as far as PMLA is concerned. For example, Mr. A do not pay income tax on his income of say rupees 1 lakh. The entire amount is black money. He has evaded around rupees 30,000 in income tax. However, an offence under income tax is not covered in the PMLA schedule. Hence, neither rupees 30,000 nor rupees 1 lakh is covered by PMLA. Any attempt in converting the black money into white money is not money laundering. Moreover, sales tax, excise or octra evasion is also not covered under PMLA. Similarly, offences under FEMA are not listed in PMLA schedule. This means that an offence under FEMA is not covered by the PMLA. This was the position right from the stage of introduction of PMLA Bill 1998. In other words, from inception, the two laws are independent. There is a specific reason for selecting only the most violent or important crimes under PMLA. 
the organized crime on mafia dealing in murder extortion terrorism prostitution have immense liquid wealth with this power of wealth they can evade the grips of law hence pmla gives massive powers of arrest and deeming provisions to statutory authorities under pmla which we will discuss in later part of today's lecture the powers are more or less draconian in nature under normal circumstances such massive powers should be restricted if they are used against ordinary criminals they lose their purpose we must remember that corrupt statutory officers can be more dangerous than criminals as far as common man is concerned that's why to prevent abuse the list under pmla schedule has to be kept a careful short list Second feature of PMLA is punishment for money laundering. Under section 4 of PMLA, any person found guilty of money laundering shall be punishable with rigorous imprisonment from 3 years to 7 years. And where the proceeds of crime involved relate to offenses under the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985, the maximum punishment may extend to 10 years. instead of 7 years the third feature of pmla is powers for attachment of tainted property under section 5 of pmla appropriate authorities appointed by government of india can provisionally attach property believed to be proceeds of crime for 180 days such an order is required to be confirmed by an independent adjudicating authority fourth important feature of pmla is adjudicating authority the adjudicating authority is the authority appointed by central government through notifications to exercise jurisdiction powers and authority conferred under pmla it decides whether any property attached or seized is involved in money laundering or not the adjudicating authority is not bound by procedure laid down by code of civil procedure 1908 but is guided by the principles of natural justice and is subject to the other provisions of pmla the adjudicating authority shall have powers to regulate its own procedures fifth important facet of pmla is burden of proof unlike normal criminal proceedings where prosecution has to establish that the crime has been committed by the accused as per section 24 of pmla a person who is accused of having committed the offense of money laundering has to prove that the alleged proceeds of crime are in fact lawful property sixth important feature of pmla is appellate tribunal under section 25 of pmla the government has been given the responsibility to establish an appellate tribunal the tribunal has the power to hear appeals against the order of the adjudicating authority and any other authority under that orders of the tribunal can be appealed in the appropriate high court and finally to the supreme court seventh and the last important facet of pmla is special courts section 43 of pmla provides that the central government in consultation with the chief justice of the high court shall by notification designate one or more courts of session as special court for trial of offenses punishable under section 4 of pml with this the lecture comes to an end in this lecture we have discussed the relationship between fema and pml and we have also discussed the important aspects of pml if you still have any doubts or queries about this lecture please contact us on doubts@fusionlawschool.com Thanks for watching this video lecture. Hi viewers, to know more about us, please visit fusionlawschool.com or you can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Links are provided here. To stay updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you like this video, please like, share and comment down below.